Alright, so in this video, let's talk about bench pressing. So, bench pressing, before I knew really how to coach the bench press, thought it was the easiest. Turns out to be the most fucking difficult. Um, and again, like, if you've watched any of my other videos, right, I, although it's complicated, the bench press, like, it's complicated to master, the uh, theory behind it and how to create the position that you want is very, very simple and it comes down to three things. So if you've watched my squatting video, I said, where does the power come from? The power comes from the hips, right? You generate power from the hips and you push it up through the bar and that's how you complete your squat. With the bench press, the power comes from the pecs, right? A little bit of the shoulders, a little bit of the triceps, but again, what you're thinking about is majority of that power and force is coming from the pectorals. Um, so, when you think about the pecs, you want this position and this structure to be fixed. Fixed position. How do you do that? Well, you've heard the cues all before, but once you sort of like understand them, it's just a case of working on them again and again and again, week after week, session after session. And it's scapulars, scapular retraction and depression. So things scaps in and down. And there are multiple cues people use to be able to get this position. What I do is with my lifters, I am talk to them about creating one scapula. So I get them to pull their shoulder blades together and then I get them to tr force their shoulder blades in towards their mid back, trying to create one scapula, which if you do that correctly, you are then gonna get a fixed position so that the, 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 the power and tension you're creating at the peg can come up through the shoulder, up the tricep, and out the bar to complete the lift. So that's step number one, right? When people say scats back and down, the reason why you are looking to achieve that position is so that you can fix this structure here. You can fix the the the, uh, the, the fucking shoulder and uh, the shoulder joint. That's what I wanted to say. The shoulder joint, so that can be a fixed position, so that the power being generated at the pec does not leak energy when it gets to here, and that's where a lot of people end up with shoulder pain penis elbow or they will get the bar off their chest and then they get stuck in that position where they can't lock it out so if you find if you're someone who's trying to drive the bar off their chest and they can't lock it out chances are this uh, this uh, structure here is not fixed step one step number two is breathing and bracing so breathing and bracing is across every single lift right so the pegs are attached to the sternum what's also attached to the sternum the abdominals. So what you want to do is think about, the, and again, what I've learned over the past year is think of this as like an anchor point. So you're looking to breathe and brace to add stability in your bench press so you're not rocking too much, but also so that this uh, position here, this structure is fixed so that the pecs can do its job and be able to generate force out through the bar. So breathing and bracing in the bench press is very simple. It's a little bit more tricky because you're in um, an, uh, in uh, extension, in thoracic extension, lumbar extension, but the principles are still the same. When you're in that position, you've got your scapulas in the right position, back and down, creating one scapula, uh, and maintaining that fixed position is taking the biggest air that you can get and trying to exhale it through a closed airway. After, that's, after you've created that, it's done don't have to think about it anymore. But what that will do is it will create uh, like a, uh, a fixed position and an anchor point so your pecs can do the work and so that you're not wobbling about the bench press. So that's step two. Step number three is leg drive. So you've heard of leg drive before. I used to be a big, big believer around leg drive. Um, and I still am, like it's still, it's still a very, very uh, important part of the leg press, but I always used to tell people to bench with their legs. Now that um, I've learned more, it's a bit like, just take the power from the legs and use it into pressing. So what I mean by that is um, when you think about leg drive, you want to make sure that your heels are, as a rule of thumb, under your glutes, under your hips, and you're trying to create an imprint of your heel into the ground. Now, the heel will never be able to touch the ground for people who compete in like the, my federation of like GPC you are allowed to have your heels off the floor, but what you wanna do is have your heels under your hips, driving your heels down to the floor, creating tension and stability, right, in the hips, so that also you can also take that power and, and or force, whatever you wanna call it, and use it into your pressing. So one of the rules that um, you wanna think about with your leg drive is just covered foot position, um, feet under the, under the hips, under the glutes, but really, when you're trying to work out if your leg press is correct, 
think about getting your hips and your shoulders as close together as possible so that you can create as much of a thoracic extension as you can. And then from there, once, just like the, the brace, once the heels are down and you've got that tension in your legs, that position is now fixed. You, you want to see very little movement coming from like trying to drive up with the legs because that that is you know generating power from the hips and using it to press. But what you're doing there is you'll find that people will have to loosen the, the, the tension that they've created to then drive back. So rule of thumb of what I say to people is get your feet in the position that you want, somewhere under the hips, drive the heels down, and then pull your shoulder blades as close as you can to your to your hips but making sure that your heels do not rise up because then as soon as they rise up you're losing the tension that you're trying to create you just want to pull yourself into the tension that you're creating um, in your quads and your hips etc so i really hope that helps you guys uncover like the cues that people use again just like the squatting these these are the master cues of being able to create a fixed point here so you can generate force of your pecs and when you think about that just think scapulas back and down or scapulas back and create one shoulder blade um, breathing and bracing create a fixed point here and then with your leg drive you're looking to take the, the power from the legs and uh, put it into the pressing just think about heels under or feet under your hips pushing the heels down once that is done they're in a fixed position do not worry about them anymore and as you're coming into your arch Make sure that the heels remain down, pulling your shoulders and your hips as close together as you can. Uh, and again, making sure those heels do not come up. Once you've done that, you're in a great position then for your body to express its absolute strength without any leaks coming from any of the structures within the body. I suppose one of the biggest things I want people to understand here is that with any of your big lifting, especially bench pressing, yes, you need to build new muscle. Yes, you build, need to build strength. But for your body to express that absolute strength, your structure has to be fixed and your body has to be working um, together without any leaks happening throughout the structure. So take from that what you will, implement it into your training. If you have any questions or you want me to review your lift or talk about a lift that you're struggling with, please reach out to me. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these. So I'll speak to you soon.